Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. Now in this video we're going to be going over inheritance. Now we're going to be using the class of animal that we created in the previous video. And in videos before that we've created things like variables, we've learned how to use string interpolation, arrays, for loops, conditional statements of the type if and switch, and finally functions with that really awesome and new feature of multiple return values. Now in this video we're going to create a dog and a cat type of class and we're going to create some instances of those and I'm going to show you how they can inherit some uh, functionality from the parent class of animal which we've already created and also how they differ when they've been created so all we need to do to create a, an inherited a class that inherits from an animal is just create a new class so we're just going to say class and then I'm going to call this class dog then just like we do when we're trying to strongly type an array sorry strongly type a variable we place a colon and then we select the type that it's going to inherit from so as you'll see here our dog inherits from animal and then we just basically we place our open curly brace and our closing curly brace and now we have a class that inherits from animal so to make dog a little different from our cat we're going to add a function so I'm just going to add func and it's going to be woof and all we're going to do when we woof is we're just going to return a string that says woof 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 full stop Oh, sorry, period. And we also need to, sorry, this is a slight error there. We also need to define that it's going to return a type of string. There we go. And that resolves that issue there. The next thing we do is we're creating our cat class. So I'm just going to say class cat. We do the same thing. It's going to inherit from animal as our base or parent class. We open that with a curly brace and close that with a curly brace. I'm going to add another function inside of this one. And this time it's going to be called meow. It's also going to return a type of string. And the value that it returns, so I'm just going to say return. And this one's going to be me, me, meow, like that. So what you'll see here is we have these two um, subclasses, dog and cat, which both inherit from animal. Now to show you how these differ from each other, and also how they differ from animal, I'm going to create some, some variables uh, created using these classes. So the first thing I want to do is call this Ryan's dog. It's going to be equal to dog with the uh, open and closing parentheses. And you'll see straight away inside of our intelligent editor, I think I've called this thing on the side a different name in every single video, but I don't really know what it's called. This real-time compiling console logging thing of awesomeness uh, that we've inherited, so that we've created an object of dog and it has got a name and an age. You might be wondering, where did they come from? Well, they've actually come from the parent class of animal, which we created before. So the next thing we can do is we can say, Ryan's dog dot name equals Toto. I'm going to call it Toto because that's actually the name of my dog. I'm going to say Ryan's dog dot age equals 16 because he's 16 years old. Now you'll see each time we've updated this, we have changed the variable that needs to be changed, name and age. We can also say Ryan's dog dot woof and you'll see that, that that method has become available to us through the intelligent um, the intelligent IDE and you'll see it's printed out to our debugger over here on the right hand side woof 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 the final thing we can do is we can say Ryan's dog dot get details and this comes directly from the parent class animal so what you'll be seeing on the right hand side here is this na this animal's name is Toto and it is 16 years old now to demonstrate how this is different to a cat, we're going to create another one. var Ryan's cat equals cat. And you can start to see a recurring theme here of how these classes can be useful when we end up having uh, a lot of code that can be reused over and over again. Now the base class of cat is an animal just like it is a dog, so you'll see that it also has a name and an age. So we can say Ryan's cat dot name equals... I don't actually have a cat so I'm going to call this one uh, Hugo, because I think that's a good cat name. Uh, Ryan's cat dot age equals zero. Actually, let's make it one so you can actually see a value. Uh, now let's try Ryan's cat dot wolf, and you'll notice this is going to have an error because cats don't wolf, and this is because our cat object doesn't actually have a function to let it wolf. It does, however, have a function that lets it meow. 
So if we add a meow function right in there, and then we take a look at our console, you'll see moo moo meow. And that's what our cat is doing. So that's showing you guys how these two objects are actually different to each other, even though they're basically the same. They have different functions at a higher level than they do at a lower level, but they are both animals. And this is a really good example. This is the example that, that I, I learned how to create uh, classes and things from when I was originally studying programming when I was uh, quite young. So the next thing we can do just to show that the cat and the dog also both share that get details function is we can say Ryan's cat dot get details. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that we also have this this animal's name is Hugo and it is one years old. And that's basically just showing you that they're both inheriting from the same parent class. Now the reason why this is useful, and you can imagine this, if you had a hundred cats, you would have to program these uh, name, age, get details functions a hundred times. But doing it this way, we can create as many instances of a cat and dog as we like, and they will all inherit that same functionality. So we could say uh, uh, John's cat equals cat. Now John has a cat. We can say Dave's cat, Dave's cat equals cat. And as you see, all of these cats, they get the same values and they'll have the same functionality, but we didn't have to reprogram that every single time. So this has just been a, a short practical example of how we can use uh, classes and inheritance inside of Apple's new programming language Swift. I hope you liked the video and uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to actually like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help. Uh, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. If you have any requests or comments, please leave them in the section below and I'll try and answer those as soon as I can. So thank you guys. Bye.